hello guys welcome to civil concept and in this video i will show you how to calculate bar bending schedule of a column of a building okay so first of all let us see what is bar bending schedule okay so a bar bending schedule it is also known as bbs in short form is a document that shows size length number weight etc for all rebar required for a reinforced concrete structure okay so whenever we construct any structure then we have to know uh, how much length of the rebar should be placed okay so how much should be the weight how many numbers of rebars will be required for a stable structure okay so let's start our video first of all let us see from the diagram you can see this is the diagram of the column okay this is the base level of the column it means this is the foundation okay and this is the topmost level of the column which is uh, the terrace okay this is the top floor of the building okay so the main rod has gone like this from here to here after that it's gone like this okay and after that it again bended like this okay so there are different part in the uh, longitudinal uh, rods okay so this from this portion to this portion is known as ld this is known as development length okay and from here to here this is also known as development length okay so if uh, if a single rod do not reach from uh, this level to this level then we have to overlap some distance to make it continuous okay now let us see some dimension okay so this is the depth of the foundation which is 300 mm okay and this is our development length so uh, how much should be development length i will uh, show you later in this video okay and after that uh, we can see from this foundation up to this uh level okay uh, this is 3300 mm after this is the 150 uh, 125 mm is the thickness of this slab okay this is a floor slab and after that uh, we have to add 3000 uh, mm uh, up to year to year it means that from floor to top ceiling okay is 3000 mm okay and again we have to add the uh, thickness of the slab again we have to add the uh, first floor to uh, second floor ceiling okay and again we have to add the uh, this uh, thickness of the slab and uh, so on okay and after that again we have to add the development length to get the whole length of a single uh, longitudinal rebar okay so this is our short information which make us uh, easy to understand the calculation okay after that you can see this is the stirrups okay and in this stirrups you can see one two three four five six uh, rebars has been used longitudinal rebars has been used and this is the rebar of 8 mm okay so you can see here this is 8 mm and 150 mm center to center spacing okay so you can see here this is the uh, stirrups used in the uh, column and uh, its spacing between these stirrups is how much 150 mm okay after that the width of this stirrups is 200 mm and this length of this stirrups uh, from this side is how much 500 mm okay and this is the zoomed form of this uh, portion okay which show the development length uh, has been provided in the longitudinal rebar okay now let us move to our, our calculation okay we have discussed from the diagram okay so column has six number of 20 mm rebar okay so you have to remember all this data to calculate the bar bending schedule of the column okay so all the data has been given here column has six number of 20 mm rebar slab thickness is 120 mm and 100 mm floor height is 3000 mm which is 3 meter okay and ground floor level is 3300 mm footing height is 300 mm okay so we have uh, already seen in the diagram development length should be hours 50 d and this is the according to the is code and we have to put this development length according to design but minimum development length should be hours 50 d where d is the diameter of the rebar okay so if we are using 12 mm of rebar then we have to provide development length how much 50 multiplied by d which is 12 mm okay and the value which comes from this we have to provide this much development length okay and 8 mm stirrups at the uh, center to center distance of 150 mm has been given we have discussed and footing killer cover is 40 mm and slab killer cover is how much 25 mm okay so these are the information which are given in the drawing and uh, some of information may not required for calculation of the bar bending schedule okay now let us move toward our calculation 
here we will do step by step calculation okay so in step number one we have to find the length of the particle bar okay for example this is our column then we have to find out the total length of the uh, longitudinal rebar used in this column okay so the formula is length of particle bar equals to development length okay so this is our development length after that the uh, height of the ground floor level okay which is from this level to plinth level okay up to the ground level after that we have to add the floor height which is of uh, floor one floor two floor three okay so up to this level okay floor one floor two floor two like this okay and after that we have to add the all slab thickness okay so i want to show you in the figure okay okay First of all, we have to add this development length. After that, we have to add the height up to this ground level, okay? And after that, we have to add all the ceiling height, okay? And uh, again, this development length. And after that, we have to add all the slab thickness, okay? This thickness, this thickness, and this thickness to get the whole length of this longitudinal rebar. Okay, so I hope you understood that we have to add the development length, height uh, of ground level, Floor height of 1 to 3 and slab thickness of ground floor, first floor, and second floor. Okay. Now put all the value of this development length and uh, floor height in this numerical. Okay. So here you can see, first of all, we have to add development length. So we have two development length from lower portion and upper portion. Okay. So uh, development length should be almost 50 D, which is 50 into D is the diameter of the river. After that, we have to add the height of the ground level. Okay. So which is 33 mm uh, 3300 mm and after that we have to add floor height which is of 1 2 3 okay first floor second floor and third floor and uh, one floor height is 3000 so we have to multiply it with 3 3 into 3000 after that we have to add the slab thickness which is also in 3 in number 3 into 125 okay and uh, plus 100 so after calculating all this value we will get how much uh, 14775 mm or if we convert it into meter, then we will get how much? 14.78 meter. Okay. So this is our required length of the uh, longitudinal rebar. Okay. So guys, this is the length of our single longitudinal rebar of the column. Okay. And guys, remember that this uh, length is without lapping uh, of the rebar. Okay. So we have to add lapping. Okay. So in step two we will find the lapping length okay so before calculating the lap length we have to find out that lapping is necessary or not okay so as we know that lapping length required is 50d which is the 50 into diameter of the rebar and after calculating we will get how much 1000 mm but this 1000 mm uh, we have to add in the length or not we know that each bar is 12.25 meter or 40 feet length approximately okay so this is the standard size of the rebar okay so if we exceed this length for our requirement then we have to provide lap length okay so previously we have calculated total length of the vertical bar is how much 14.2 meter okay which is more than 12.25 meters so each rod will have to lap at least one to attain the required length okay so we have calculated that we required how much but uh, 14.2 meter of rebar but standard rebar in the market came in only 12.25 meter or 40 feet okay so we have to provide what lapping between the uh, column okay so we have added the lapping length with our total length okay so previously we have calculated the total length 14,775 plus this lap length which is 1000 mm and if we add all this value then we will get how much 15,775 mm and which will be 15.78 meter okay and you have to remember this this is the actual length of the rebar we required for a longitudinal rebar okay now something i want to tell you you can see here uh, while lapping the rebar in the column we should not provide the lapping in the same level okay we have to provide in the stagger or uh, zigzag form okay for, uh, we have to provide one lapping here and another here another here and another here okay and we have to provide lapping by making a juggle okay so you can see here this rod has came like this and it has been juggled like this okay so this is on a juggle and we have to provide it by juggling it is here okay so we should not provide lapping at the uh, end of the column okay like, like at the bottom or the topmost layer okay we have to provide lapping at the mid of the uh, section of the column okay so it will be safer for the column 
Okay, let us move toward our third step. In step number three, we will calculate the cutting length of the stirrups. Okay, so length of one hook you will be 90. But what is hook? Okay, so this is our stirrups, and you can see this rod has gone like this and bended like this, and this rod has gone like this and bended like this. Okay, so this length from this uh, end to this end is known as what? Hook. Okay, so this hook length will be always 90, and this is the diameter of the rebar used to construct this stirrups. Okay, so for example, if the diameter of the, this stirrups is 10, 10 mm. Then we have to provide 9D. It means 9 multiplied 10 and it will be how much? 90 mm of the uh, hook length. Okay. So this is a calculation. After that, uh, we, you can see here the cutting length of the stirrups. Uh, this is a formula. Okay. So cutting length of the stirrups will be perimeter of the stirrups, which will be our perimeter means the uh, length of all side. Okay. And after that, we have to add length of the hook. After that, we have to add this length, this hook length. And we have to deduct the bend length okay so whenever we bend the river like this okay it get stressed somewhat okay so we have to deduct this stressed part okay so according to the bending angle we have to deduct the length okay so you can see here uh for 45 degree bend length we have to deduct 1d okay for 90 degree bend length we have to deduct 2d for 135 degree bend length, we have to deduct 3D. Okay, so D is the diameter of the river. Okay, and hook length should be how much? 9D. We have already discussed. Okay, now uh, put all the values of this uh, perimeter hook length and bend length to get the cutting length of the stirrups. Okay, so putting here you can see this is the perimeter. Okay, uh, formula of per perimeter 2 into A plus B, where A is this length and B is this length. Okay, plus two length of the hook because we have to add the length of the hook and uh, here you can see there are two hook length okay so we have to add here two hook okay so here two hook length minus three number of 90 degree bend okay you can see here one two three three number of bend of 90 degree and uh, minus two number of 135 degree bend okay so here you can see this rod has gone like this and bend it like this and bend it like this there are 100 uh, 35 degree bend in this hook okay and there are two in number so providing two number of 135 degree hook okay so putting all these value a plus b 500 plus 200 which is given here 200 plus 500 okay and 2 into 90 which is the hook length we have already discussed that the length of one hook is 90 so 90 minus 3 into 90 degree bend 2 into 135 degree Bend and putting all these value we will get how much? Put 1448 mm. Okay, so the cutting length of the stirrups will be how much? 1448 mm for this column. Okay, guys, so we have calculated the length of longitudinal uh, reverse in the column, and also we have calculated the length cutting length of the stirrups one stirrups in the column. Okay, now let us move toward our step number four. Okay, in step number four, we will calculate the number of stirrups. Okay, so number of uh, stirrups is calculated just by dividing the span of the column by the spacing between the stirrups plus one. Okay, so let us see in the drawing. So this is our drawing, and uh, here this is the span of the column uh, up to which we have to provide the stirrups. Okay, so simply the formula to provide the number of stirrups will be this span length. Divide by what? Divide by the spacing between this stirrups. Okay, spacing between this stirrups, which is almost 150 mm. Divide by 150 mm, and after that we have to add plus one, and this is a formula. Okay, the same thing I have done here. The number of stirrups required will be total length of the column divided by spacing of the uh, stirrups plus one. Okay, so total length of the column we have already calculated. Okay, so 3300 floor uh, up to floor uh, height. Okay, so 125. This is the slab thickness. This is the floor height, uh, slab thickness, floor height, uh, slab thickness. And again, this is a floor height. Okay, and plus 100, which is our floor uh, thickness. And after that, we have to divide it by spacing of the stirrups, which is 150 mm. And this is plus one. This is a formula. And after putting all this value, we will get our uh, approximately 85 number of stirrups. Okay. So we have also calculated the number of stirrups and number of longitudinal bars. We have already decided that there are six number of 20 mm of rebar. Okay. Now let us move to our step number five. 
now in step number five we will uh, prepare a table okay so you can see here this is the vertical bar which is our longitudinal bar okay and this is the, our uh, detail of the stirrups okay so the diameter of the river is how much 20 mm we have seen in the drawing and diameter of the stirrups is 8 mm number of river used is 6 in number of a vertical bars okay and the stirrups we have already calculated in step 4 that is 85 number of stirrups we required to prepare a column okay and the cutting length we have already calculated with lapping is 15.78 meter and for stirrups the cutting length we have calculated 1.44 meter okay so how much will be the total length of the uh, longitudinal band just we have to multiply this number with the single cutting length okay so after multiplying this and this we will get how much 94.68 meter okay and again after multiplying this and this we will get how much 123.08 meter okay so this much uh, meter length of the river we required for longitudinal river and stirrups okay now we will calculate the total weight of the river for this much length okay so we will require for longitudinal river of 20 mm 233.6 kg and for 8 mm river we will require 48.5 kg and total river we will require was 282.5 one kg of river so how will we calculate this weight of river okay in step number six we will calculate the weight of river okay so guys this is a formula to calculate the weight of river which is d square into l which is the length of the river and divided by 162.195 and this is the constant value okay? and d is the diameter of the river which should be in mm okay and this length should be always in meter keep in mind that this d should be always in mm and l should be always in meter okay so let us see our calculation here i have written d is the diameter in mm and l is the length in meter okay so don't be confused here this is a formula okay so for vertical bar to calculate the weight of rebar we will pro uh, provide the diameter of the river in this formula and length of the river okay so diameter of the vertical bar is almost 20 mm 20 mm which is our square okay and this is the length 94.68 meter we have already calculated total length of the vertical river is 94.68 meter and after that we have to divide it by constant value which is 162.12 and after putting all this value and calculating we will get approx uh, approximately 233.6 kg of river for longitudinal bars okay for stirrups we will require uh, and again we will provide the same uh, uh, value in the this formula so for stirrup the uh, diameter of the river is 8 mm and total length we have uh, calculated 123 meter and after dividing by 162.12 we will get approximately 48.5 kg okay so this much uh, weight of river for longitudinal river at this much river for stirrups we require to prepare our reinforcement of the column like a drain okay now let us move back to our uh, table this is our bar bending schedule table okay so this table contains what the diameter of the river okay how many numbers of river will be required uh, what should be the cutting length of the single river how much should be the total length of the river and how much should be the weight of the river uh, in a column beam or slab okay next time i will show you the bar bending schedule of the slab okay so please like this video and subscribe my channel for new update about civil engineering thank you